a little different because I don't ever plan my talk. I've only come out of the closet about my experiences uh, less than two years ago. I kept, my, um, I kept my life very quiet with my family and my, um, and my husband. Uh, because I came into this lifetime as a very young girl, one foot here and one foot there. I am very comfortable with the formless. I'm actually more comfortable with the formless than I am with the form. As a little girl, um, I used to sue with myself because I, I came into a family environment that was uh, not the most comfortable for me. And I would soothe myself by laying on the grass and um, taking myself out to the edges of infinity. So at six and seven and eight, that's how I was in the world. I wasn't like the other kids. I didn't really want to play with anybody else because this really didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. There wasn't enough love here. So I um, was out of body quite a bit, out with the formless. Um, I did find that I had a baby brother who, when I attached to him, that love poured through. I became very close to my brother. I basically mothered him um, all of my life. And I've had experiences all the way through. Some people now calling them STEs, spiritually transformative experiences. Um, it happens to me quite often. It just happened about an hour ago. Thank you to a gentleman in the second row. Um, I never know when I'm going to get a download, but it happens. I don't know what I'm going to talk about, but the words come out. I wrote things down. It's a joke. It's just that part of me that thinks I need to write something down and talk to you. I'll never even open this, and I know it. So I, yes, I had a near death when I was 18. It was years before, um, you're gonna figure out my age right here, uh, before Raymond Moody even coined the term near death. Uh, so I had a very high fever, a life-threatening fever that put me in the hospital. And that fever um, did take me out. They were putting me into a very large tub of water in this a very sterile room, trying to lower my temperature very quickly. And as quick as I was um, out, I was back in. But when I was out, um, I was told that I had completed my soul's contract. And those were the words that were used, that I had come, and I had finished what I had done, what I needed to do, my soul's contract. I don't know to this day what my soul's contract is. I, I'm guessing, but I don't know. I'm sure I'll know next cycle around. But they said, um, if you'd like to, we can show you a life forward. So when I um, left my body, I didn't do the typical um, near-death witches, going through a tunnel of light, seeing any family members. I was immediately to a spark of light. That's how, it, how I best describe it. Everything was light, including me. There were no forms to be seen, no angels, no God but there was everything. So I would say, yes, there were angels, and yes, there were God, but there was nothing in form. And the energy showed me, um, and again, remember, I'm 18. I wasn't really desiring to have children. It was an inner yearn to have children, but at 18, you're busy with other things. And they showed me a life forward with two boys. And those two boys caught me, and I said yes, so that I would be willing to come back. I have two boys. I have a 39-year-old and a 37-year-old, and now I have a beloved seven-year-old granddaughter. That near death, um, even though I didn't recognize it at the moment, it didn't come into my consciousness and my awareness until years later, um, was just the beginning of gifts unfolding for me. So I'm uh, some of the typical near-death person that have, um, I can't wear a watch, um, I have to back off equipment, I'm clairaudient, clairvoyant, clairsentient, and then just in the last year and a half, mediumship is starting to appear. I don't know how or when any of this will happen. I also want to share that um, Jackie gave me permission to talk about something that I've never spoken about before because 
it, it sort of is a bigger box that a lot of people don't even want to look at, and that is um, I had missing time. I had four hours of missing time. And this experience of missing time, and I didn't look at the clock to see what my 10 minutes, so please tell me, um, totally changed my life once again. All of these experiences have shown me that I am not just this. We all have a body, but we're so much more than the body. And when I can step away from that body, which I'm pretty good at doing now, words come through, energies come through, gifts can come through. And if I can remember, my life runs effortlessly. I've learned to surrender to what is. When I um, was taken out for the missing four hours, I, I won't have time to tell the whole story, but I can tell you there was a couple of things they did let me remember. They told me that my information would be veiled. Um, there was no time. We all know that there's really no such thing as time. They are here. We're on a linear time schedule. So here it was four hours, but there it was like I was gone for years and years, and enough information of universities poured through me. But all of it was veiled, except for two things that they told me. They said, please keep your belief systems malleable. You don't know what's going on down there. It, it, when these words came through in this energy, it isn't a knowing here. It's a knowing in your cells, in, in your field. Cells is uh, a finite. It's a field. And what's happened is that they told me, as my life progressed, I might open a book, and there's going to be a sentence in the book that's going to cause a download. I'm going to watch a movie, and a scene in the movie is going to cause a download. Or I'm going to talk to somebody like I talked to Gary today, and boom, my head blew open about an hour ago, and my heart just was affected positively. We are so gifted, all of us. You do not need a near death to experience the grace of who we are. When people say that we're divine beings, I don't come from a religious background. Um, when I was, um, the only word I can say, I was off planet for those four hours because I literally could see down uh, on Earth. I recognized that that Nancy, that is down there, was just a limited skin suit. And that really, truly who I am is connected beyond anything. When I said to the edges of infinity, truly that's who we are, all of us. For me, just surrendering to what is. Life is now, they've brought, they, and I, I, I don't know who they are, my, my soul family. I, I don't know what words to use. But I can tell you that there is a force. There is um, God. I'm, I'm OK if you want to use that word. It seems a little limited to me. But that force runs through all of us. And it creates our day-to-day, moment-to-moment experience. And when I think, when Nancy thinks that she's going to write her notes down for this talk, it's quite funny. I, I literally laugh at myself. And I know that none of these were going to be open, and I'll just speak to you. And we all have that opportunity to just remember the truth of who we are. We are that divine spark. There's nothing you need to do about it except just B. We, we, we hear this now. Just my coffee cup at home <laughs> says just be. But I'm sorry, it's, it's really truly, I think, that simple for some of us. If we can just let go a little bit of this form that binds us. I don't know why I've been gifted with these experiences. But I can tell you I'm very grateful. I get to share and give to other people in my coaching work. I've done hospice in the past. I love helping people pass because I know there is nothing to fear. 
my sister passed away four weeks ago. Granted, the phone call came and it hit me like it would hit anybody else because it wasn't expected. But when I woke up in the morning, work had been done and I knew my sister was in her wholeness. She started speaking to me, I, I can hear, and her voice, I had never heard her voice like this before. It was rich. She was really in her wholeness. And I called my brother and I said, you know, I'm supposed to come to California and be with you. He and I were the last siblings. We've lost all our brothers and sisters, our parents, everybody's gone. And I said, if you can dance with me, if we can wake up every morning and just be with what happens, I'd like to come and grieve with you. It was three weeks of the most beautiful dance with my brother, listening to our sister, finally being out of her addicted body that had been dragging her down for 63, 65 years. And she was finally in her wholeness. And I got to experience that. It is beyond magnificent to know that when we do drop this body, we are not leaving anything behind. We take all of it with us and we reclaim our wholeness and connections to those that you might be missing. So I'm gonna stop talking. Thank you so much for letting me share and um, be well. All is well. <laughs>